Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about this new product from Diatone. Diatone is 10 years old and they've brought out a number of products to celebrate that anniversary. This is the Diatone 176 scale Q33 karting FPV ready to race car. Now this is available in lots of different colours where you can get only the car, a ready to race kit, which is what I have here, and also the ready to race kit that also includes a simple set of box goggles as well. Lots of different versions available in different colors. As you can see here, I've got the yellow one. Now I looked at a car like this a couple of months ago uh, for running around on the desktop. It was kind of an idea for a Christmas present and lots and lots of you left comments on that video saying, put FPV on it. And it was a really good idea. I think Diatone were obviously listening because that's exactly what they've done with this one. It isn't as cool looking to look at as that original model. I'll put links down below if you want to go and have a look at that re particular review. This is a little bit more clunky to look at, but it has got an all-in-one FPV camera at the top. So while I unbox this, let me go through some of the specs. So again, the body ratio is 1 to 76 scale. Uh, the wheelbase on this little car is 33 millimeters. It reckons about 50 meters ground uh, remote control distance, although I've been driving it all around my house here and having an absolute ball with it. Reckons you'll get about 15 minutes out the battery. Maximum steering angle is 30 degrees, which is actually uh, really, really tight. I didn't think that was going to be enough, but when you have it on full throttle and you have it on kind of expert mode, you can really get it to uh, slide around does have proportional steering. The proportional steering seems to be set, so it doesn't get less sensitive as you increase the throttle. Battery inside here. I'm not sure what the battery is because it says it's 3.7 volts, 110 milliamp hours in the specs, but then further down it says it's slightly bigger, but that's kind of irrelevant. Just know that you're going to get about 12 to 15 minutes of running around. The size is 55 by 40 by 26 millimeters. And the little car itself weighs about 19 grams. They've been quite clever in making sure that the central gravity is nice and low on this. And it is very difficult to knock it over. They're calling it a karting car in some of the documentation. And in other things, they're saying it's kind of uh, off-road. I definitely wouldn't call it. Uh, an off-road car. It says it's got off-road style because it has the uh, high chassis and you know the chunky wheels but actually I found that anything over three or four millimeters high will absolutely ground this out so even on a thick carpet it can get into trouble. FP me the FPV module that is on the FPV version, uh, the power of it is 25 milliwatts, little linear antenna, and it only has four channels. Now they seem to line up to band A, I think it's one, three, five, and seven, but actually it's very close to some of the Fat Shark bands, and that's what I've been running them on here. Uh, it powers on automatically when you power the car on so it's pretty easy to get up and working if you have any kind of goggles that have kind of an auto search feature you'll find it pretty easily the remote control itself takes two AA batteries and is black the remote control is probably the weakest part of this little setup uh, the, the radio feels very very plasticky there aren't any rubber or foam bits on here to help you hold it out um, I guess that's how they've kept the cost down it works absolutely fine but I would have preferred something a little bit nicer with easiest access trims for steerings and things like that in terms of driving, it is fantastic fun. Uh, the camera works surprisingly well for something like this. And running around in both indoor environments and also outdoors as well when the ground is very flat is a lot of fun. You can really get a kind of a mouse eye view of wherever it is you are. But it also has a tight enough turning circle that you can run it around on your tabletop. The reversing seems a little bit clunky. You kind of almost have to come to a full stop before you can start reversing. So compared to some of the other tabletop cars that I played with, it isn't as smooth from the controller, but once you put the FPV goggles on, that slightly finicky steering at high speed just seems to go away and it becomes absolute blast to run around. 
This has been a lot of fun to get in and have a play with. I think for some though, the cost of this is going to put it into the very expensive toy category. I do like the fact that you get a spare shell that you can customize in this. I think for children, that would be an awful lot of fun. If you've got Sharpie pens, you could absolutely go to town, coloring that in and putting stickers on it and having a lot of fun. Nice to have options for the car with and without the FPV stuff, the controller and the goggles for those who already have those pieces. I found that my Fat shot goggles with it worked really nicely. Nice weight to the model as well, and that low central gravity means that I have not yet managed to get it flipped over unless someone actually kicked it with their foot. And that 19 grams gives it quite a solid feel as well. The radio itself has two driving modes. It has a basic one where it limits the throttle to I think something like 60%, and then you can turn that off and go full tilt. But even at full tilt, it isn't a speed machine, but in the lower speed, it's absolutely ideal for running around your desk when you're bored in that Skype meeting. Decent driving time off the little battery that's inside here. I would say 10, 12 minutes is the maximum you're going to get on this. I think 15 minutes is pushing it a little bit, particularly when you are running on uneven surfaces and you're using a lot of throttle. It's just very fun and the steering, although it is sensitive, does work well when you switch to FPV. Couple of things to be aware of this, there's only four channels on the video transmitter that's in it uh, and the power level is set at 25 milliwatts but all those are band uh, A uh, so if you don't have band A on your goggles it's not a problem. There are bands and channels on the fat shark band which lots of us have uh, that allow you to see the image really nicely. Steering again doesn't appear to be weighted so that as the throttle increases uh, it gets a little bit less sensitive but again when you're in FPV it doesn't seem to be a problem. When you're line of sight it's easy to oversteer and to um, do a little bit of a donut. It's definitely not off-road as it needs more ground clearance and even heavy carpet can trap it and I'm a bit disappointed there aren't any little LED lights. There are LED lights on the board that show when you plug it in to charge it. You, the charging cable that comes with it can be charged from any USB adapter. It's got that kind of JST power connection at the bottom. You just pop that in the bottom and in about half an hour it's ready to go again. But it would be very nice if it had little LED lights at the front and back because I think these things would be fantastic fantastic if you had a few of them and you and your mates running around maybe set out a little racetrack in an area and kind of zoom after each other it'll be fun to have the led lights to kind of follow each other along through the darker sections of whatever it is you're running under and also that battery isn't interchangeable so once it is flat unfortunately that's the end of the fun you have to stick it back on charge and go make yourself a drink while you wait for it to charge up again uh, i guess that's just to keep the size down everything is kind of soldered in as i mentioned the controller feels super basic it works fine and uh you know what i've not really noticed it once i got over the initial disappointment of it being so plasticky but having some form of foam or rubber on the grips would have been really nice and watch out for that large antenna at the top. You can get stuck in places that you think you can get under because the antenna will get caught. I've had to go fishing for this under sofas and all kinds of things because I thought I could get under there because from the view that I'm getting from the camera, it looked like I could make it, but I actually couldn't. In summary, this is a very cool, fun toy to play with. From lots and lots of people, it would be far too expensive for a toy grade model like this. Uh, the camera in particular has been a very nice surprise. The camera itself and the little FPV setup on the top works incredibly well. I wonder if Diatone are going to bring these kind of pods out to enable us to put FPV on lots of other things as well. That would be something that I'd really like because some of the other all-in-one units that I've had, things like the VC400 from ZOHD, the camera on those is pretty bad. But if you have been looking for a little FPV car to run around to annoy the cat and the dog and to uh, keep yourself entertained in those Zoom calls, this is definitely worth a look. And happy birthday, Diatone. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.